and we are live. Welcome everyone to another painting video, well not painting video, <laughs> another live session with myself. Uh, as you can see we're still in lockdown, still got the bad hairdo, uh, but today hopefully you're going to find this really interesting and find it very useful. Today I'm going to be talking through inks and pre-shading. Now I've got a, an awesome bit of terrain that we need to we need to do up for our tournaments. If you've ever been to one of our tournaments, you'll know that me and John, we like to pride ourselves on having some really awesome scenery. So this is gonna be something that's been sat now down on the floor, waiting to be done up for quite a while now. So I thought this is about the time that we get this done and ready. So hopefully the intro is finished and it looks like we've got a bit of a delay <laughs> on that side. So hopefully, I don't know how far we are behind the delay. Oh. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> on my phone, it was still on the intro, so do apologize. Let's go through this. So what I'm gonna be taking you through today, I'm gonna be taking you through, if I can get them out. I'm gonna be taking you through these. Now, these can give these inks can give a really awesome vibrant effect on any of your models you're painting just a couple of drops of these in with your paints can change the the way your paints come across on the actual model itself so we're going to use some of these today on this on the uh, fortress of redemption and we're going to pretty much use i think we're going to go with the contrast uh, today just for the airbrush keep it nice and simple so it's already pre-shaded in sorry it's already undercoated in white and this is going to be interesting because normally when you do pre-shading you do pre-shading in black um, but because we've got a large area which is going to be remain white I want to leave that on there but more importantly as we go through the airbrush I want to show you how we're going to do the skulls how we're going to get the pre-shade into those areas there and around there and I may even just go around with some gold around that part there um, but what we want to go through with today is when we do the greens on how vibrant we can get those greens by using those inks. So let's see if we've got any conversation going on, anything in chat. And who have we got in so far? So we've got Maria. Uh, we've got Vortex, thanks for joining us. And Hive, thank you very much, much appreciated. And I think that's it. So hopefully today we're a little bit more organized. Let's start this off. So first of all, we've got any questions at all? Any questions at all? More importantly, did anyone get a chance to do any of the any of the other stuff that we went through last week? When about the practicing on the on the picture? Because that's a great way of, of really homing your skills on the airbrush. I can't stress how much that's a really good way of doing it. So let's crack on. Let's go in with we're gonna go in with the greens first of all, but what we're gonna do. We're just going to create some pre-shade and we're just going to darken up these areas here. <clears throat> and all today, all we're going to do today, we're just going to use contrast or try to just use contrast and inks. Um, actually, that probably won't work. That may not work at all. I think I may have to break that straight away and actually change it, change it up a little bit. Okay, let's see how we go. Let's get my weapon of choice. So we're going in with this Soltar airbrush. It doesn't, if you watch the one I've done two weeks ago, it doesn't matter what airbrush you use. Um, it's more what you feel comfortable with. So the pre-shade, we're gonna go in with, so we're gonna go in with the contrast. I'm gonna go in with one of the grays. I think that'd be a nice little gray. And what I'm gonna do on this part, because this is gonna get noisy, I've got the, the air booth in in there today spray booth in today just to catch all the all the toxics um so what i'm gonna do while we've got that uh no i can't we're gonna, i'm gonna put that on mute just so you don't get that that reverberation coming through so there's gonna be parts where it's gonna be a bit quiet um she might be all right Okay, so let's start off with the thinner. So we're just going to go with Vallejo, Vallejo Air Thinner. Contrast is quite thin. It's, it's not very thick at all. And you can just go straight 
straight from the bottle if you wanted to wouldn't recommend it put thinner in anything you use inks washes anything like that make sure you use a bit thinner in there and all we're going to do a little bit of contrast in there and there we go now all i want to do is we're going to darken up just the top part there Now the reason why we're doing this for, when we put the, the next layers of paints on, it's really going to make the, the colours pop, it's going to make it stand out more. And then as soon as I get to the next part you'll see what, exactly what I mean. Okay, I'm just going to add a little bit of black into that. Just add a tad. Again, contrast black. And let's get it. That's better. Now, what we're also going to do. We're going to do the so we're going to do some of the pre-shading on the, the here as well so what we're going to look for is all the dark areas and this is what's going to make the pre-shading work actually i'm going to lie i was going to say we're going to use full contrast tonight but we can't because when we do the white we do need to we use need to use another paint um now we could go in with a dry brush that would work quite nicely but i want to try to do it as much as this i possibly can with an airbrush and then I'll also show you how to do some of the um masking off because that's really really crucial on a lot of stuff you do so let's just do some more let's get some more bits in there uh, let's see if we've got any questions i don't think we've got anything at the moment <laughs> John, you know it's chaos. Let's get a bit of shadow in there on the inside. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm just going to pop this on mute for a sec, um, just so we can, so I don't deafen out your ears.
right <clears throat> back so what we've done so far so so far we've got the so we've got a nice light pre-shade now the beautiful thing with the contrast let's wait for that to finish let's see if we've got anything in chat and then so so things so far we've got with the with the pre-shade especially on the whites with that gray you get a lovely a nice subtle gray in there so it's not strong it's not too overpowering so when we go back over with the white that's going to really really stand out and again we've got all the pre-shades in there ready for the greens so what we're going to do first of all we're going to go what should we do first of all mm -mm -mm. we're going to go with the greens first of all and then that was just so we can see exactly where we are. So let's clean the airbrush out first of all. Let's make sure we keep our maintenance up. So again, with this one, I'm just gonna go in with some alcohol fluid. Get it in there, give it a good clean. Now, welcome to the party, my friend. Um, trying to get it so the chat stays up. Dude, thank you very much for that. Much appreciated. Really do appreciate that. Um, let's get that in there. Okay, let's give that a good old clean out. If you like that, you're going to really love the the um, plasma weapon I've got coming up in the next day or two. The I don't know if you've seen any of the pictures at all. Post them up on Facebook, and I've also po posted them up on the community page on the YouTube channel. Um, I've put a little, well, I've done a little painting guide on how to do paint and plasma weapons using the contrast and using an airbrush. And man, the air, airbrush <clears throat> and the contrast, you can do so many cool things with it. And I just think it's one of those things that I'm surprised not more, more people are using because it's such an awesome paint. I've got a lot, a lot of time for, for contrast. And if, if anyone wasn't aware that all the all the Games Workshop glaze range, all their, um, was, all these ones are no longer available from Games Workshop. And I think it's pretty much because of the contrast can do this as well as all the other cool things that the contrast can do, which is awesome. Oh, what's something going on there? It's better. Okay, so greens, what are we gonna do with the greens? We're gonna go with Dark Angel's green, and then we need a light one, and I think we're going in with those, those two there. So we're going to go with the Dark Angel's green, and we're also going to go with the White Lightning. Um, the more I think about that, the more I think that's probably a bit silly. And I think what I'm going to do. Mm, let's give it a try. Actually, let's just give it a try. Let's give it a whirl. Let's see what we're doing. So when I done the, so when I done that one, that was with all the, <clears throat> not you can really see it that that well anymore, but that was actually with the um, that wasn't with the with the contrast. But let's try with. Let's go straight in with the contrast. So we're going to go in with the Dark Angel Green first of all. Again, thinner. Actually, we're going to go bright first. We're going to go bright. So we're going to go contrast in. And then what we're going to do, just to brighten this up a little bit more, Thanks Ace, much appreciated on that. It's friggin' awesome. And, and plus all the money goes to a really good cause. So that's what we're gonna go with. So with that, in with the mix, we're just gonna go two drops. Uh, sorry, let's go three. Three drops straight in. Unfortunately, that camera's not really showing that up a lot, but you can see it from where I can see it, that, that color's a lot more vibrant in there. So what we're gonna go with now, we're gonna go into the lighter areas.
beautiful thing with contrast, the more you go over an area, the darker it's going to get. those I might actually do those of brass make them stand out a little bit Now, I'm not worrying so much if I'm getting the, the paint onto that part there, because once I've done this part, I can then go back over and, and tighten that up. Let's just get that straight in there. Like so. So not too close, making sure that once we've, we're airbrushing in, we're not going, see where that's starting to pull up just there. We're not gonna keep going back over that, otherwise if we do, you'll start getting it streaked. Can you see that now? So the idea is once it starts pulling up like that, come away from it, just let it dry. Nice little trick with the airbrush. The airbrush can be a dryer as well as a, a, an able to ply with paint. And what I mean by this is when you put the paint on, you pull back, push forward, but push down. And you can then use this, the paintbrush, the airbrush, to actually dry the paint. I don't know if I'm liking that. Before we get any further, I'm going to just finish off that last little bit there, and then we're going to see what that looks like. Because I might just change okay get myself all stuck up here pipettes really really handy if you're if you're halfway through a paint job and you need to change over instead of chucking your paint away use the pipette just to suck that paint out and that way you can go back into it just use that later on so let's pop that over there like so and we'll just clean that out so while i'm doing that i'll just pop myself on mute and then play some music Okay, let's just 
put that on a little bit lower, lower down. And then, okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to use some of the, again, more inks, but we're going to use some of the scale color. We're going to use the interest range. Again, going to be using contrast again, just to see how this goes, but we're going to go in with the contrast dark angels green. I'm hoping this goes to plan, because if it doesn't, <laughs> it's going to be like egg on my face. Like, God damn it. Let's pop that on mute for a sec. Let's get a bit of contrast straight in there. And we're going to have a little drop of ink. Inks work really, really nice. Any bright colors you do, like reds, oranges, blues, contra uh, inks really make those colors really, really pop. Okay, here we go. So now we're gonna go for the dark parts. Open. Now, as I'm as I'm going back over, I'm lapping the 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 darker green over to the lighter green as well, just to pull that blend in. So you can kind of see. However, Dave, dude, thank you very much. That is friggin' awesome. I really do appreciate that. Now, if I told you of all the money we make, actually go we're actually trying to put together to get a new new equipment, and maybe one day get a better get a better studio would be friggin' awesome. Right. So that is that so far with the contrast. I'm not sure if I like that. If I'm gonna be honest. Um, actually, once I put once I put a glaze over that, that'll actually be all right. No, we're going to stick with it. That actually looks. That's actually not too bad. That's not too bad at all. What we need to do on the the next lot, we'll raise the we'll raise the green up a little bit higher, and I think that'd be absolutely fine. So let's get another pipette. Let's suck out what we got so far. So that's actually a nice little mixture so far. We'll pop that in. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let's clean out the airbrush. And for some reason, my little paint pot I had. So nice little trick for you. Clean out the airbrush. You can spend lots of money cleaning it out with all the types of fluid. What I normally do, I have an old cheap paintbrush. As you can see, look. That's, skanky as hell it's got no the most important part of this it's got no bristles coming away that's really really important when cleaning out the airbrush another way of doing it instead of spending putting loads and loads of chemicals through it take the paintbrush dip it in with the old with the old paintbrush just use it to get in there to clean out all the paint now this is not going to clean it out of the out of the nozzle but what this will do will just help reduce putting loads and loads of chemicals through so if you haven't got loads of cash you haven't got loads and loads of dosh what this will do this will just help reduce some of those costs down so all i'm going to do is just put it in there clean around the nozzle just do around the side just make sure there's nothing on hopefully you can see that so it ha hasn't fully cleaned it out because you're going to have lots and lots of paint all stuck in here still so what we're going to do now, just get in there, just get that good old clean. Uh, alcohol fluid, I ibuprofen. It's not very expensive. You can get like a couple of liters, like tenner. I don't know if you can see that. I'm not sure how much it costs in the states, 
but that stuff is really, really good. If you use the airbrush cleaner and you, you know, you go through the whole process of sticking it in, you're doing your blow bag and you think, oh yeah, do you know what? That's done a really, really good job. Once you stuck that alcohol fluid in, you will realize exactly how much paint is still stuck in the, in the actual airbrush itself. It's crazy. And then the other thing I use is just an old, old jam jar and all the excess paint I just top, pop into there. I don't put that back into my cleaning. And once I've done that, just give it a good old spray, even though you think you've done it. I guarantee if you do that, when you're doing, what you're looking for is a nice clean fluid when you do that blowback. It's not so much you need to worry about this part when you're doing when you're doing in between greens so like if you're going from light to dark it's not really that much of an issue you can just get away with just a quick a quick clean out and you'll be fine when you're finishing off at the end of the night and you're finishing off your paint session you really need to make sure you clean your airbrush out look at that so even though i thought that was done can you see there that okay, and that's meant to be Go to show, eh? So let's get that in. Look at that. Still loads of paint in there. Even though I've just put the alcohol fluid in there. Still loads and loads of paint trapped in there. Okay, that's fine. We don't need to worry about it anymore because all we're going to do is that. Jesus, there is loads in there. Buckets. All right, let's carry on doing the pre-shade. So going back to that prep, the one we had earlier, I'm just gonna pop that back in there. So we haven't wasted any of that paint away at all. And we're gonna go back to, just going back to those greens again. So this time we're gonna go a little bit further up. So I'm gonna stick the, the fan on. So I'm gonna put some music back on. Thank you. 
Okay, hopefully I've saved your ears and you, you haven't been blasted out. So any questions so far? Uh, so what we got? Well, let's have a gander. Welcome everyone that's joined, by the way. Really do appreciate it. Um, much life. Okay. Let's go with this. Okay, cool. You you guys are just chatting away. That's cool. That is cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go with something where I'm not going to appreciate it at all. Um, only because there's not really a lot there to appreciate. So let's just go... This is where I'm actually going to try something now with the contrast. That green is beautiful. That really has got a nice... Adding those extra couple of drops of ink into it has made that stand out loads. Just gotta be careful I don't put too much paint down. As you can probably see, well, it's starting just to pull up just a little bit. So I've gotta be just a tad careful there. This is the, um, the green I've gone with on my Imperial Guard. And it's just friggin' stunning. I just love that. Just love vibrant colours. Let's just get that all up around there. Okay, so this part, I haven't done any of the pre-shading. I'm just going straight in now with the green. I'm actually going to try something totally different. I'm actually going to use the darker greens in a bit to actually do all my, all my pre-shading, if that makes sense. Okay, I'm just going to put the, I'm going to put the fan on, so I'm going to put, it on, put some music on, so let's change it up a little bit. I'm probably sick and tired of hearing that one. Uh, what we got? What we got, what we got, what we got. No, that's not a good tune.
Okay, so uh, see, there's a question there. So the thickness of the needle, I'm using the medium range on the uh, on the solter, which is a 0.4. With airbrushing, with the type of paints that we're using, there's really no point in going anything other than that. If you go too small with the airbrush, with the needle, what will happen is your paint will dry up too quickly on the end and you're forever, forever unblocking it all the time and it could be a real pain. I thought that on the medium, John, I thought it was a 0.4. It could be a 0.4. It is actually a 0.3. Sorry, I do apologise. Um. As I said, you, you really don't want to go any, any bigger than that. So if you've just joined on and you're just seeing that I'm going in without no pre-shade, this is just, I'm going to try something a little bit different with this side. So this is kind of a little bit of an experiment for myself as well, playing with the properties of contrast. Nothing like trying something new, right? Okay, so that side, we want. Gotta put that fan on. That is stinky as hell. Hopefully that's not too hopefully that's not too loud in your ears. Just gotta get that in there. The amount of stuff that's coming off this really don't fancy this in my lungs. Until, let's just do... Not that you're going to see this bit, but I'm going to do it anyway. Just use the paint up. Okay, right. So that's that part done. So we'll leave that for a sec. Turn the fan off. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to the one that's got the pre-shade on it. Uh, so before we do anything else, a little bit of a process, but we'll go back in there, clean this out. Making sure that you take the excess paint out of your airbrush after every use is really important. Don't get complacent and lazy. Um, there's, don't get me wrong, there's going to be times where you accidentally do it. There's been many a times where I've been down here, had a, had a beer or two, done some painting, gone indoors and forgot that I've left a load of paint left in the in the actual cup of it, on the actual um, airbrush itself, pain in the butt. However, you can sort it out. If you did miss the last one, there's some really good stuff that Badger do. Very, very good at cleaning out your airbrush. Very, very good. Costs about 10 or over in the UK. You could probably get it cheaper in the States, but it's really good stuff. Uh, so with this one, uh, I did have an airbrush where I'd had, it had loads and loads of paint just left in the in the thing for like over a couple of years, but I just got trapped in there and I just thought, oh, I just really can't be bothered just buy a new airbrush. But to be fair, I've had two of these, I've had one of these and then I've got another one when I was in Vegas a couple of years ago. Uh, these have just lasted for absolutely forever. Really, really good brushes, love them. And I know there's going to be a lot of haters out there and go, oh no, Stein and Beck and all that's a better. It's more down preference. The reason why I like the Solitaire, Solitaire is it's the size and how it handles in my hand. It's nice, I like it. And I like the, the cup being smaller as well. I love that. It stops me putting being a Muppet and putting too much paint in the, in the cup. So we're going to go back in with the thinner. Actually, we don't need to because we've already got one that's pre-done earlier. So let's clean up that excess paint in there. That will then let me use that for another day. That's just cleaning out the pipette. That means I can use it again and again and again. So using that the paint that I mixed up earlier, I'm just gonna put that straight back in. 
And then let's just give that a good clean it on the pipette. And then any questions at all? Uh, me and Penny don't uh, have fun time. Sorry, I'm losing that a bit. Uh, okay, that's what I have. And I feel it can be a bit too, at times, if it pulls. Any tips on helping a ton? When it pulls, when it starts to pull, it's because your paints are too thin. Contrast is, naturally, is gonna be a, a more wetter paint than if you're gonna be using, say, some of the normal base range. The only thing I'll suggest, don't pull so back, so far back on the actual airbrush itself. Low down your PSI and you'll have a lot more control over it. When you're doing it, try to, if you're gonna go in small, go in close, but go in light. If you're gonna go big, you're gonna go like a big area, then come further back and do several coats, post to one large one. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's just go back in now with the dark part. Right, I'm going to stick this on because this is going to get stinky again. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch.
pull that back to where it should be. Okay, so what we're going to do next, we're going to go in with the... So as you can see with that one, first of all, so where you've got the pre-shading, let's just put that paintbrush up there for a sec. So where you've got the pre-shading, you kind of got the colours coming in, you've got the vibrancy of the, of the inks as well. Now, we're not finished with that. We've still got to put another another layer over the top of it. We're going to create a, a nice lighter green glaze to go over the top, top of it. And that's just to pull those colours in and to make that, that pop a little bit more. I'm even tempted to go over a yellow glaze opposed to a, a lighter green. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that one out in a sec. But it's just basically one, to pull the two colours in, and two, to make that just to smoothen those transitions off. Like, see where you've got the lighter green there? It's not really picking up on camera, but it just needs a little bit more just to go over the top of it, just to make that make that pop a little bit more. And then especially like where you've got the colours are not fully filled out there and there, that glaze is going to help that. And again, if you get to that point there and you think, shit, that's a bit too dark, I want that to be lighter. At this point here, this is where I would go in with a, go back in with my white primer, uh, not my white primer, with my white paint um, and I do like the pre-shade again and all I would do is just put the white in where I want it to be lighter and I might even do that I'm going to do that in a bit actually on this one just to overemphasize on the on the lot on the shading so we're gonna we're gonna do that in a bit and then on this one so this is the one where it had no pre-shading so we've just gone over straight over that green straight away and now what we're gonna use we're gonna use the contrast green the contrast paint to actually do the pre-shading itself. Well, not only the pre-shading, but just the, the shade, the darker parts. So what we're gonna do with this part, we're gonna feather this into the darker part. So we're gonna have this part lighter, and then we're gonna have that part there darker. So what we're gonna do, just gently, beautiful thing with contrast, it allows you to be fair, it doesn't matter what you use, even if you're not using contrast, another, if you're using other normal paints, you can still do the same effect. And all we're gonna do, just slightly bring it down, not too much. Which is gonna go in there. And then just at the top part, again. As you can see. No difference really. Let's just make it a little bit darker towards the top. And let's just go a little bit further down. Definitely need a lighter green coming down here, or just the. As soon as we do the, as soon as we do the washing, not the wash. As soon as we do the glazing between that, that should pull those straight in and make that pop even more, make it more vibrant. Now, if this was a static model, so like a, um, a character with a pose, you know exactly where the light source is going to be. So, I suppose really, in a way, what we should do is still think about where the light's going to be coming in but it's a bit of train i suppose it don't really matter so much on this one um, we're going to manipulate it a little bit not too much i suppose what the other way you could do it on the sides we could just go darker on the sides at the bottom and then darker at the top. Let's just get the shadow into there. Just so you've then got the, it makes then the, the highlights stand out. If that makes sense. 
I don't know, I actually prefer that than that. Oh, see that's starting to fall apart. Let's get that in there. Hopefully, that's gonna look awesome on the tabletop. I was gonna try get in there before the night's finished. We're gonna get some um, weathering on this as well. I'm gonna play around, not with oils, but we're gonna use powders just to make that pop. And then the door. Just gonna do a little bit around there. Down there, dark. So they're not known for being a light angel, that's for sure. Okay, and then over here, we're going to go. Um, I suppose. Go down there, across the top. And have we got any questions at all? In previous session, Darren talked about uh, practicing. Yes. More, more importantly, did anyone actually um, have a go at doing that? That'd be interesting. If anyone has had a chance of practicing any of that with some current inputs be really interesting to see what everyone's done or what they've practiced on. So we've got the Twisted Dice Facebook group. It'd be really awesome if, you know, if people can post them with their, what they've done on there. More importantly, it'd be interesting to see if anyone, you know, found that interesting as well, or whether that found some merit on it. So what we're gonna do, just gonna darken that up there. Again, you're not really gonna see this part because once the train's on, this is just more for my, um, my OCD. Okay, right here we're gonna go darker at the bottoms. I need to put the uh, fan on because it's getting a bit stinky. A little bit more in there. Thank you, by the way, everyone that's joined in and tuned in tonight and joining in the conversation. Really do appreciate it. You guys and girls have been absolutely friggin' awesome just joining us. Let's just get that in there. Again, you're not, as I said, you're not really going to see it, but it's just more to save my OCD. Let's just go a little bit up there for that. And that's that done. So by the way, if you just joined into the party on this one, if you have just joined into the live stream on this one, this is something I'm having a little experiment with. I haven't done any of the pre-shading on this. It's just purely working on the contrast. So going in with lighter green, and then going in with the darker green to pull out the, to pull out the, the pre-shade. Cool, right. So going back to the first project, what we was working on. Let's clean out the, the dirty water or the dirty paintbrush because this part we can't have any of the previous paints in there this is crucial and 
And then I think what we're gonna do, we need a nice, we need a nice green to go over the top of that. So, what can we go with? What can we go with? Orc flesh, I think that'd be a nice green. Uh, no, that might be a bit too dark actually. Uh, what else have we got? We've got... Mm, that's a bit too dark. Uh, I think it's probably gonna be a yellow. I think now that might be a bit too too dark. Um, actually, where's the plague bearer's flesh? That'll actually probably be a really good one. I'm sure to do the plague bearer's flesh. Or am I hallucinating? Am I imagining that? Gilliman flesh. What have we got? That's a bit too dark. That will kill it. And it is that one, isn't it? I think we're going to try that over the top. We'll find out in a second if that's, a, is that, if that's the right, if that was the right choice. So just as I was saying about earlier on, about lightening up the model if you've gone too dark and saying. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go in with some white. So we're going to go in with Tamiya white. I'm going to make sure we use the right thinner for this as well because this is crucial. With Tamiya, if you use the wrong white, it's really going to, it's going to mess your airbrush up. So if you use Tamiya colours, make sure you use the Tamiya thinners. If you use the Normal Games Workshop Vallejo, make sure you use the Vallejo thinner. If you don't, as I said, you're you're just going to kill your airbrush. Cool, right. This one I do need the fan on because this shit is toxic. I love you guys, but not that much, <laughs> not much to die. So with this, what we're gonna do now, I'm just gonna go back in. and get some tunes on.
Okay, so as you can see there, we've just done some pre, so we've got the greens and where it was a little bit darker on the sides. And this, again, this is more just to show you how to correct if you've gone too dark with your, with your darker colors. Because um, it happens, it happens. And there's been loads of times I've done many, many projects and I've gone too far in. And I think actually, do you know what? The, the dark the dark green's been perfect, but the, the lighter green has not, or I've gone too far in. So all this is gonna help me now do. So I'm gonna leave one side where I'm not gonna tamper with it at all. So we can compare. And then we've got the other one where we've just gone straight over. So now the big question would be, what green to go with? Just so I clear out this this brush. Um, now I'm tempted. Very, very tempted. Wow, there is loads and loads of green in here. Even though I've gone through with the white, there's still loads and loads of green in the actual head itself. Crazy. Um, yeah, Sean, look, you're right. It is, it's gotten that the, um, the contrast does lose, lose some of its, uh, its ability, but what contrast offers you, it, it can give you some nice rich colors. And unfortunately, one of the biggest problems with contrast is it doesn't, not very good over, over bigger models. Um, what can we use? What can we go with? Uh, um, I'm thinking about maybe yeah this is gonna be proper it's gonna be really really bright so I'm gonna use one of the normal normal paints which is gonna be the warp stain for this one so again a bit of thinner and then we're gonna go paintbrush Dip in, get some paint, mix that in, in the actual head itself. I would recommend that you don't copy me on this one, you actually use um, use a cup or something like that. You'll find it will be more kinder on your paintbrush. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna add, make that a little bit more vibrant. We're gonna go back in with the green just add two drops of that, just to brighten that up. And then go from there. Thank you very much everyone that's joined us so far on this live stream. You guys and girls have been absolutely freaking awesome. Keep your questions coming. Right, so with the brighter colors, you can see we've got a nice bright green now. Now what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go back in where we've done the white. Not gonna go too heavy on this on the paintbrush, but all we're gonna do is you're gonna pull that back up. Back up into the dark. Different way of doing it, but you can, you can see, having that lighter color, you can, can pull that back up into the dark areas. So if you have gone too dark in, you can just pull that slightly back up and you get about a lovely transition in between. And the beautiful thing with that, because we've gone back over that white, it's actually where the white paint underneath, it's just smoothed that out nicely. So let's go back down here. And go back around there. So those bits there. Any questions so far? It's been many times where I've actually gone back and forth on a model when airbrushing, where just to get that nice blend in, I've gone in with the light and then gone back in with the dark and then gone back in with the light just to to blend those two colors in nicely. There we 
go, let's just get that in there. Being careful not to pull. There's too much paint just loading up there, so being careful not to respray back there as I push that paint in. And what we don't want it doing is ruining what we've done so far. So back in. Okay, so that was just the contrast on its own. You see, you kind of got some, you got the nice transitions in between. And then that is where we've gone back in with the, using the Games Workshop, um, normal base range or layer range. And then all we've done is pre-shaded again, back up with the white, just pull those transitions in. And to be fair, that's actually quite nice. So we've got that part. So that's, the, that's done on the greens, nearly. Actually, no, I don't lie. We've still got to do a glaze over that. So what we're going to do with this part here is, is there anything else in the chat that I'm not missing? Nope. So this is what is going to happen if we don't appreciate, if we don't go back over the shade. Because of the greens we've got, we're going to pull that a little bit further down. So again, with this one, if you, if you just joined into the live stream on this one, this one I haven't pre-shaded. This has just gone straight in over a white base and then got over the contrast through the airbrush. So what we're gonna do with this one, let's pull it in. So it smooths out the contrast, which is nice. Just tidy that up. Just tidy that up there. Otherwise, that's looking pretty. The greens are looking pretty awesome at the moment. Of course, I am going to say that. <laughs> so let's just control the transitions there. So we're going to go back in. Thanks. Let's mute this and we'll come back.
Okay, so that is off the, so just using the, the contrast greens in and using that other color, it's kind of helped pull those colors in. And it's a good little experiment on that side. But I think going in with the white, first of all, would help that a little bit more, help that pop out, especially where you've got the, the paint there where it's kind of not, not so neat. So putting that extra white over the top would have been a lot better on that side. Otherwise, not too shabby at all. So now we're gonna go, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do that glaze over the top just to pull those colors in. So especially more on that side there. And exactly as John said, would make perfect for the, uh, the Necrons, right? You can do some really, really cool dark Necron color scheme. So we're gonna go, um, two mines. So we're actually gonna go with the Plague Bearers Flesh. I think this is probably gonna be the right green. Once all the new, once all the new stuff comes, I'll actually um, I do a video on on that. Many many years ago, I done a really awesome color, uh, a really awesome Necron with the dark greens, bringing it up into the lights. Um, I was trying to find it out the other day, and I just can't find the damn model. So with this paint, we're not going to go. It's going to be more con uh, more thinner than contrast, or 50-50 contrast to thinner on this one. We want this really, really thin. Again, I've added two drops of the green ink. And then if I could just put that on paper, just so you can see. Uh, if anything, that's probably a little bit too much contrast. So we're going to add a little bit more thinner in that. Perfect. Right, hopefully this is the right choice. We'll find out in a sec. So what we're gonna do is gonna go all over. Just to pull those, just to pull that blend in. As you can see, you lose the harsh line in between the blends. So it's not too, it's not too thick that it doesn't start overtaking the colors. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit more there. There you go, so it's really pulled. It's really pulled that in nicely. You see you've got a real nice, real nice transition in between. And you've got, the, you've got that nice dark shadow in that seems to do really, really well with painting competitions. So if you go to tournaments and you've always got that one guy that's got that really awesome painted art army where he's always got that dark bit on top of the vehicles. That's it. That is the magic. So 
So let's just go over that. So that was the, just the contrast one there. Let's get down into that. And you can see again, let's pull it in nicely in between. The other beautiful thing of doing the, the glaze over the top of having to pull those colours in, there will be bits that you've missed, like little tiny little bits, and that kind of helps fill those gaps in. So it kind of gives it a nice smooth, smooth finish. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so we're just going to go back over that. Just pull those colours in. Turn that fan on because that is starting to stink.
welcome to the party there. No worries, no worries. Thanks for joining us, really do appreciate it. Um, this will always be on catch up anyway, so you can always download it when you're when you're ready. So if you miss anything from the beginning, just go back and just watch rewatch it. So I'm just gonna quickly clear out the just get that excess paint out. Because what we want to start on next is going over the whites, doing up some of the doing up some of the um masking. And then we're good to go. So let's pop those up there, make sure they get protected. Um so as you can see, once once that's all redone over the um over that glaze over the top, that green's really popped and it's really, really nice. And that's awesome. I like that. So more importantly, over where we've just gone over with none of the pre-shade, you can kind of see it's a completely different It's not too bad, but it's kind of like a totally different beast altogether. I'm not too sure on that. Once we start finishing it and adding some more colours to it, we'll see where we go with it. But I might find, I might redo it. But we'll see. We'll see how that comes out in the end. Because that's kind of painting a different way that I wouldn't normally paint. Um, so what we're going to do now, just to protect the paint, we're going to go over with a matte varnish. Now this is, this is crucial when you do any painting. Especially if you're going to do any masking you want to make sure you protect some of that paint underneath. So what we're going to do, we're just going to get some matte varnish and we're just going to give it a couple of coats over the model just to protect it. Plus what you'll also find, the matte varnish or even gloss varnish will pull those transitions in as well, which is, which is always good. So that when you're painting and you sometimes do, you look at the model and you think, damn, that's kind of a bit of a harsh line. As soon as you put the matte varnish over the top of it, you'll find that a lot of your highlights that you've put on will tend to blend in anyway, much nicer. So let's get that on, because it's gonna stink up ways. And let's go.
Okay, so, <clears throat> so there's a question there. Um, when do you varnish, do you clean the brush any differently? No, not really. Uh, so yes, the over a period of time, the varnish will will clog the airbrush up. Um, but all you're about to see, all I'm gonna do, is exactly the same as I would vet with the rest. I'm just gonna go straight in there with the water, water, before I get corrected. I'm gonna get in there, just get all the excess varnish off. Just spray that, what we've got out. And again, just using the, the alcohol, I'm propofol, and I'm just gonna go As you see tonight, I haven't changed the airbrush over. It's just been the same, the same brush. Now, if you do find that it does start clogging it up, so this is where that badger stuff will come in handy. Let's just get some of this in there. Again, I don't know if you can see this tonight. We've got loads and loads, you can't really see that. We've got loads and loads of little bubbles appearing up. And when that's having a chemical reaction with the actual paint, so any paint that I've got left over in there, or even the, the varnish, it will start eating that up and start breaking that down. And again, with the tip of the needle, all I'm doing is just loosen it up, pulling it back and forth. And what I'll do, that'll help get any paint. And if you can see there, there's a big, big lump just appeared. Just doing that, it'll help clear the paint out of the nozzle and out of the arm itself. And with my kitchen roll, just get that excess out. So drop in the comments down below, what's everyone working on at the moment? What projects have we got on the table? I know you can't share any pictures, um, but it'd be interesting to see what armies we've got going on. Or if there's anything you'd like, like us to see, either me or Ace cover on one of these live streams. I'd like to see if I can get a live stream out every week. Um, but sometimes with work, it's quite difficult. So I've got to get up early in the morning. But we'll see what we can do. Cool, right, that's that done. And that's it. That's all I've done for the cleaning part. So nothing more than that. So I'm gonna stick that up there for a sec. And then we'll put that one to the side at the moment. Um, because we're gonna go, we're just gonna focus upon that at the moment. And then we're gonna go in with, this is where I had everything all planned, everything all set up earlier. And I've moved it. Where have you gone? There you are. That was a good boy, I tidied it up. Okay, so just with the, um, a little bit of masking tape. Oh, what is that on there? A little bit of masking tape, get it in there. Get it around. Now, as you can see, I've kind of gone up on the actual, the wings themselves, but that's fine. I'm not worried on that. what we're gonna do, we're gonna get a knife and we're just gonna cut that, cut that out. Let's get that on there, like so. Let's get that into there. To be fair, Pretty confident I can just go straight in with the airbrush. Perks of having sharp nails. That's what we got. Awesome, awesome. Are you contrasting them or are you just using the normal Citadel range? Um, 
Let's go from that to there. If we're careful, we shouldn't. Right, so that one we're just going to mask up. The rest, I'm not going to. Knife in, straight down. That's the only thing you've got to be careful of. As you're doing that, you don't see that. It's just let's pull that back. Hello, little man. You're right. Lynch guard. Okay, cool, cool, cool. What colours are you going to go with those? Um, no, don't worry, man. That's cool. I really appreciate you guys joining joining us on tonight's stream. So that's really, really awesome. That is absolutely freaking awesome. To be fair, I've been work myself. I've been working on grey nights. I'm trying to find the motivation to finish off the grey nights. when you're doing a color scheme that's not quite your own. It's kind of a little bit, a little bit tricky. All right, let's go that there. Okay, you kind of get the idea. So that's what you, it's what you want to be doing, masking up, cutting out and around there. That's all I'm going to do for the masking, only because I'm confident I can get in there with the airbrush. Now with this, we're gonna go, what do we wanna do? Um, do you wanna go with a blue? Even though I've kind of done a little bit of a pre-shade earlier, I don't think it's gonna be, we have to go back over these over here. So we're gonna need a nice darker color to come over the top of that. Otherwise, unfortunately, the, the green will come through on the white. We don't really want that, because that's not gonna work. Uh, so we're going to go with, I'm going to go with the Vlasio, uh, not the Vlasio, I'm going to go with the um, Tamiya, because the Tamiya, uh, I'm going to have a little bit more control over that. In fact, I think that one, I'm going to go in with Phil Blue. Mm. No, we're not actually. We're going to go with Flat Earth. I think that's probably going to be the better one. I think Flat Earth is probably going to be the best, especially on the, the skulls over there. So let's go with this and see how that's looking. Terrible. I find this Tamiya stuff will go through quite quickly. Uh, using standards, we need to add more. No, that's cool. I see it. Years and years ago, I remember going to Warhammer World, and uh, a guy had used this like um, spray paint, paint gold, and these Necrons were just blinging as hell, like really, 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 really shiny. But the gold was beautiful, and the Necron army was just stunning. And then a year later, someone had a, um, a chrome Necron army, again, same type of standard, but it was just stunning. Loved it. Absolutely freaking awesome. Okay, so we're going to go with the Tamiya stuff. So again, this stuff is not good. Thinner. And then we're going to go into there. So I'm going to stick this fan on. So I'm going to put the music back on. Uh, let's get the, get the tunes on. Thank you. 
And that's me back. So hopefully you could see where I was got talking about the two weeks ago about the um, airbrush control. Using the color and inbooks allows, having that practice allows you to learn exactly where to put the paintbrush. As you can see, I haven't really done, I haven't have done no masking at all. It's been a little bit of overspray, but I'm not gonna worry about it because if I want to later on, I can go back in there, weather it up. So. It's more, you do have that ability to control it if you desire. So let's clean that up, because this is where the magic's gonna work when we start going in with the whites. 
as soon as we start pulling the whites on this, it's going to really make it pop. Uh, which one needs to be red? Got it. Uh, let me have a look what you're on about. Ba -ba -ba -bam. No. New Games Workshop. God, it's stuff. Let's have a look what you're on about. Go Chaos, Dark Angels, and... Actually, it's more going to be... Where at all, is it? Where is it? Ba -ba -ba -bum. Train, there you go. Uh, see if I can see a picture of this and I can see what you're on about. What needs to be. Oh, wow, they go really, really dark on that, don't they? Yeah, wow, theirs is very, very dark. <coughs> No, theirs is green, John. Theirs is all green with a white white thing on the shield. <laughs> yeah. So what we got in the chat? Look down for one minute. The entire field. Oh, 100%. All right, let's just clean this brush off because... You see Tamiya is really... Interesting enough, these are no longer available in stock from Games Workshop. Let's get all that crap out. Dave, thank you very, very much, my friend. That's really, really kind of you, sir. Really do appreciate it. And welcome, Lee. Let's get that all on there. Let's get all that paint off. Yeah, once that paint gets in there, that is a nightmare to get back out. So as soon as we start going back in with the white on top of that brown. Oh well, wow. what's going on there? The only part I hate about airbrushing is constantly cleaning out the bloody airbrush. Uh, what's that? Uh, the heart was what I could find. Is it? Oh, cool. <laughs> So what we got, go e, uh, I've ordered an airbrush set up and all arrived except the actual brush. Are oh, you joking? Yeah, that's a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> There's no Dark Angels love here, my friend. <laughs> No, nah, I'm only joking. Dark Angel is really cool, and it would be really cool to have a, a full Dark Angels army. Uh, if I think I'm going to do one, I think I'd do the pre-heresy, because there's some really, really cool stuff, and then just pull it over to the actual... Get a couple of Demon Princes with it. <laughs> cool, right. Let's pull... I'm just going to pull that mask off, because it's not... Not really serving me because I'm not really doing it on the rest. Okay, right. What we're going to do now, we're going to go back in with the Tamiya White. Um, let's make sure we get that really. Let's get 
some air in there. You see a lot of this is done just via, no real measurements, it's all done by eye. Yeah, brilliant, that's a good little consistency. Right, I'm gonna put the tunes back on and then I need to put the fan back on because this is gonna stink like hell. Um, let's get that, let's get that. Oh.
Okay, so I'm gonna show you something else. Another little cool stuff. Um, this stuff is from Green Stuff World, and it's masking putty. Now, once I start getting in with this white, it's gonna start getting into places that I don't want it to be in. So with this masking putty, the idea is you can reuse this stuff over and over again. And then all you're gonna do with this, is you're just gonna push this in. Into the areas there. Like so. Now these parts, I'm not confident enough that I'm not gonna get the white, the paint where I want it to go. So just to play it a little bit safe, a little bit safe, we're just gonna pull that up. Stuff is so simple to use, really, really cool. Um, and just get it where you want it to go doesn't ruin the model it's you can reuse it over and over again which is cool and all you're going to do just with a modeling model tool same stuff that you'd use for your green stuff you just paint that around to where you want it to go just gonna get a little bit in there it's not I completely forgot I had this and it's such a cool cool bit of kit I can't remember how much I paid for it I don't think it was expensive uh, see I've got a little bit of overspray there but I'm not gonna worry about it too much so what we're gonna do gonna carry on with that and then I'm gonna pull that out because I think once no it's still staying in there so we can just putty that all off I don't know if anyone else has used this stuff before. But it is really, 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 really good. You can see, you can just get straight up in there, up into the gaps. If you're doing like guard tanks or anything like that, this stuff is friggin' awesome for that as well. And what I mean by that, if you're going to do like all the camo, all the camo shape, all the camo um, colours on it, you can get some really good, good effects with that. And of course, anything where you can reuse over and over again is good. Good for the environment, and good for your pocket. As we all know, hobby is expensive, and anything that can make the hobby cheaper is better, is good, right? So let's get that in there. And the priest hence is that. The only downside with the putty is if you wanted to go like sharper into the lot, into there, the putty's not going to lay to do that. So let's go that into there, that into it's made into a sausage, and have I got? It's alive. Let's use the thinner one from Games Workshop and just see whether or not that's actually better. No, it's like 10 times worse. All right, let's just try the, let's try that one. I have actually got some, um, some rubber green stuff tools. I just don't know what I've done with them. I thought, <clears throat> I know who's moved them, a little girl. She's probably used them for her arts and craft. Joys of having children. 
but I wouldn't trade her for the world. She is a little gem. Hopefully, I don't know what everyone else is like, if everyone else has got any children or anything like that, but trying to get your kids into the hobby. With her, it's not been not been easy. She's had a little go at painting an orc. And she's and she's been really good at that, which has been cool. But trying to get her to do anything more than an orc has been. Um, it's from Green Stuff World, and it's airbrush masking putty. Welcome, Carl. I didn't even see you join the party, mate. And the beautiful thing with this in is you can just reuse it over and over. Paint don't stick to it, which is absolutely friggin' cool. So let's get that in there like so. Should get eat green stuff to sponsor this this live stream, right? <laughs> green stuff and Blazio. Right, let's get that in there so I can just get that part done. That to there, like so. And then what we'll do. that up in there like so there like so let's get that right in it's crucial we get right down to that point there so what I'm gonna do is just channel that out and get into there like so I'm not worried about that bit because I'm gonna go over that bit and then to there So much quicker than tape, that's for sure. Unfortunately, tape masking is um, can be expensive. Not it can't be, not it can. It is expensive. Can't remember the last one I bought a load of tape. I think it was like six quid a roll. And if you're doing a big commission job, then that's going to go pretty damn quick there you go let's get that right in there like so Flip that around here like so let's get that up pull that around let's get that around there Really push it into where I need it to go, and then that around there. Actually, let's just finish that off now. Also, I'll get around to it and I'll forget about it. 
that's not what we want, so let's go. That. Let's pull that right back. Like that. Let's get that in there like that. No, the only thing you've got to be careful with when doing this, when you um if you go right if you spray right up to that point there, you're gonna have that harsh line. So we just wanna feather that in. When we airbrush that, we want to feather that in. We don't want that hard, well, I don't want the hard line doing this. Or this is going to look, not look right. If that's the effect you want, then absolutely cool. Um, but tonight, that's not what we're after. So let's actually pull that back to there, like that. Two more sides to do, and we're nearly there. Nearly, nearly there. Thanks again, everyone that's joined us on to this tonight. You guys and girls have been absolutely freaking awesome. Now, if you haven't, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It really does help out massively. And of course, make sure you're smashing that like. That way I know I'm doing something right. But hopefully, everyone's come away with some tricks and tips tonight. Hopefully, I uh, everyone's seen me do some stuff that's been useful you can take away uh, if there's anything that you've seen that's been been helpful or you think that actually you know, after tonight seeing this this is what i'm going to take away from me drop down in the comments let me see what what's been good or even if you just <laughs> to be fair probably a lot of people have probably tuned off left their left their max or pcs running and i'm talking away in the background but even still that's cool like so and then let's get that in there that's in there actually let's just cover that bit up make sure we don't make no mistakes and then let's push you right down to the crack Right to there, like so. Oh, I just thought something. Might even be able to get away of doing some crackling tonight on it. That'd be really cool. Do that like age weather, weather effect where it's all cracked. Let's get that right up into the, there you go. Let's get that into there like that. That into there like that. And then that side, let's do the same. Let's get that right in there. Let's get that right up to there. That right into there. Okay, so nice and masked off. So we know that's all gonna be protected and we can carry on as normal. Um, no, that's cool. Right, let's stick the tunes back on. So what we've got in the comments, still watching on the PC, but got the big telly on. No, that's cool, my friend. Thank you for what, thanks for having us in the background. Really do appreciate it. Ah. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not keeping you awake. Or maybe I've just got that, that terrible voice that puts people to sleep. Okay, let's get some tunes on and then let's get, so I can put some smelly stuff going on.
Okay, so as you can see when doing this or when going through with the actual airbrush itself, I'm spraying away, keeping the, the shadows in. 
So with the skulls at the bottom, I thought I'd leave that to last and actually go through with this with you. So this to make doing the skulls nice and easy. So we've already pre-shaded it brown. All we're going to do is making sure that we've got the airbrush at the right angle. At this point, we can use the model itself to angle it. And all we're going to do is just going to come from above. And we're going to keep a bit of a range from it. So I don't know if you can see how far away the airbrush is. all we are going to do. So I'm making sure I'm keeping the airbrush at the right angle. And that is it. So let's pop before we do any further on that, let's just do that, that, that. Let's pop the airbrush up nice and safe. Let's dry off what we've got. So let's just mute that for a sec because I know the airbrush is actually going to kill your ears. Okay, so let's pop off the masking tape. Masking tape. We didn't use masking tape. Let's pop off the actual, as you can see, the paint's not sticking to it, so it's just coming off. Let's pull that out. Let's pull that out. That could be reused again, which is good. It doesn't come off of my model. I don't care. Right. What do you reckon? I think that's looking friggin' awesome. Again, where the where the um, the party has gone over, you've kind of gone over the top there. So that point there, I can just go back in and just go over a brush, get a little bit more detail on that. The only using white, any white paint that you use for the airbrush, it tends you can lose a little bit more control over it. You can't, you haven't got as much control as if you was going in like with a green and you've got that chance of over spluttering. So I could go in there with the airbrush, but because I'm gonna go in so close, the airbrush itself is just gonna splatter up over the side and we don't want that. But that is looking freaking awesome. I love that. That's really gonna pop on the tabletop. Right, it's just freaking awesome. So I'm gonna put the music back on. I'm gonna finish off this last little bit and then what we'll do, we'll then put some other colours onto it. We'll then add some, um, we'll gloss onto it, and we're going to try tonight um, some gloss, the GW uh, gloss into the actual recesses. Now, I've got a, an idea in my head, and whether this works or not, if it does, it's going to be freaking awesome. Um, but if it doesn't, then it's still going to look cool, <laughs> just not as cool. So let's pop the mute on and let's get some music on the go.
Thank you.